for our February 2024 monthly meeting or demo. Um, I, I think we've already altered a couple of the things that are on the through is our club announcements, which was our demonstration, which was going to be Anthony turning chopsticks, but we're going to postpone that one because uh, Anthony's lame right now. Not, not in the, in the, he has a bad arm right now. I should say it that. He's on the DL. There we go. So Mike's going to stand in uh, and pinch hit for him, and he is going to do uh, the ergonomic advantages of tools to handles. The ergonomic of tool handles. With our, uh, um, and then we get into the challenge table, which were small and easy wood bowls. Looks like we got great. And then our show and tell. Which it looks like we've got a new ID from there. So, getting into our February announcements, um, as you can see, our new clubhouse. Times Day right around the corner, you know, our shop leagues love this. Um, uh, for a lot of hours of donated energy and the Packing and cleaning and the cleaning and the building. Um, uh, I, I saw faces showing up to help, but I haven't. Everybody that um, lent a hand in, in whatever fashion, I just want to uh, let you know that the club personally and, and, and our board and the club really appreciate our uh, attitude. Uh, we had people showing up, everybody was. We had people showing up on the coldest day of the year to uh, move over here, and uh, everything went. Plenty of work to see, yet to do, but uh, I think. Long ways on it. Last Saturday, I believe, um, we had some shelter. Testing, testing one, two. That I won't call out personally, but they've put a lot of time and effort in here. So if you know those, give them a, a, a big thank you for that. Um, we are going to have a setup day this Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Expect to go all day long, but if you wait for a couple hours, we're basically going to try to get the equipment in place, get the shelves uh um, and try to kind of get the shop in, in place so we kind of see where things are going to fall. So that will be this Saturday, starting at 9 p.m. till I would say we'll be here into the afternoon, but we uh, can stop by at any time if you can help. Um, the goal will be to get the equipment set in place and unload the storage totes. Come for a while or stay all day. This one not working. Hello, hello. All right. Um, if you have not done so, uh, 2024 dues is due, so please get these paid. Um, I, I know that most, uh, probably about every member that I see here uh, have already paid, but if you happen to have, have uh, missed that, we, we would appreciate that. And thanks to all the members who have paid, and there were a few members who I won't call out specifically, but they actually made uh, a donations to the club when they paid their dues so we certainly appreciate that um phil has a instagram account for the club and he's always looking for photos and content this would be a photo of your project and a short description of what you did and what you used to finish it with and things like that just information that he can throw up on social media to show people that we're active and and doing new things all the time. So um, don't hesitate, even if it's the first time you've done something and you really liked what you ended up with. Um, 
please. <laughs> <laughs> please see phil or or give Phil some uh photos and some information and it'll get it out there on, on our instagram account and on our social media platforms that that he has helped okay. us get us into um open shop let's see we're trying hard to get back on schedule with open shop dates uh once the setup has been completed which i'm hoping to be this saturday we should have it in place to the point where we can resume our normal uh, normal schedule um, if you are an opener and you need a key to this building, please see Kevin. Kevin can get you a, a key so that, that we can continue to open. Um, there have been a couple of equipment issues reported. The drill press has an issue with the bed adjustment. I think they said the rack and pinion portion of it needs some work, um, as well as a knob for the speed control that, that was damaged during our move. Um, we may not be able to use this until it's fixed, but keep your ears out and, and just ask somebody if they know what, what the situation is before you use it. Um, the bandsaw, I don't know for sure, but uh, they thought that might need some attention after the move as well. So um, be before you use those in open shop, just make sure that they've had the attention and that they're running well. Um, once we get the new shop space set up, Please do your part to keep it clean and organized. It will be nice to see it the first day with any, any sawdust on the floor because I know that's probably the only day that we're going to see it without any sawdust on the floor. But we can do our best to kind of keep it clean. Um, in terms of uh, help wanted for the club, uh, we're looking still looking for some shop openers. Anthony has been uh, taking up most every Wednesday and Thursday since... Uh, for about the last year really so um we'd love to have somebody step in on one of those two nights if if possible and um we also would like to have a couple of people just on a list of people that could back up our openers in case they can't make it that day so if you're interested um or or have some time to, or or availability to do that please see me or um one of the board members and we'll get you lined up and, and figure out what kind of days and, and what opportunities there are for you. Um, we're always looking for demonstrators for the club for our monthly demonstrations. Uh, don't hesitate. If you've come across something new or you've tried something that you really liked and enjoyed that you think would be a fun demonstration. Um, talk to Mike. We can't work it in this year. Um, he's still trying to fill up this year's calendar. Yeah. Uh, had to kind of see where we were at the, at the first of the year before we got too far down the line. But um, I'm sure we can fit you in early spring, summer, fall, maybe some winter time. So uh, see Mike, if you, if you have any opportunities there. And uh, my, my note here is help support the club by participating in the dollar sweepstakes. But tonight we're not going to have a dollar sweepstakes because of a couple of reasons, uh, one being that we didn't have the face shield on site, and the other being that we don't even know where our bowl is that we collect our <laughs> or the tickets. So <laughs> we're going to find those on Saturday. <laughs> we'll, we'll be good. I do what? <laughs> do want to remind everybody that uh, we'll be uh, having a few demonstrators uh, turning tops and a few small items over at the Urban Woods event at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. This is on Saturday, February 24th. It's from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And if you haven't gone before, there's a lot of activities that are going on and, and uh, things that you can check out. It's all geared around outdoors and, and uh, urban woods, I guess. So um, we just kind of fit in the, with the group. They're nice people and, and we get to talk to the community and kind of introduce people to our club and, and what we do. We can't sell anything at the event, but we do turn tops and, and them away and, and uh, do get in conversations with a lot of people. So um, we've got enough help, Jerry. So we're good that way, but please uh, support the club by just stopping by and saying hey to the guys that are there turning. Upcoming events. Our club, club's going to be participating in the first Friday event starting this spring. I think I've kind of planted that seed a, a while back. So that's one of the reasons that we had the Turn Small Bowls event. 
was to um, get in. We want to have a table full of, of bowls and be selling them for, I think they're, are they all going to be $20? So don't put, you know, 20 hours into a bowl and, and hope that you're going to get anything other than $20. But so the, the idea is that we can give the men an opportunity to recoup some of their, uh, expenses for for club dues this year by if if your if your bowl is the one that's sold and and it isn't a donated bowl because i think some of them will literally be donated to the club then that twenty dollars will be take, given back to you um look at that as a way of potentially uh reducing your dues over the time yeah turn as many as you want donate as many as you want I would say we could have a variety of, uh, yeah, as long as we can put them on a table for 20 bucks because we just don't want to get into a lot of accounting or anything. But yeah, I think if it's a, if you think it's a sellable item at $20, by all means, bring it. S sign your name. It's art. We'll sell it. <laughs> okay. Coming up in March, we are going to have, uh, Phil's going to do a demo on, turning green wood so and i think probably by may or april uh we might get anthony back to show us this chopsticks demonstration that will will be interesting um as always locating information about the club the best place is the website kcwoodturners.org um find the calendar of events the the left-hand column has uh, about anything that's coming up and, and has a lot of information and ways to get member uh, lists and, and um, see, see our current member list and everything. So feel free to jump in there. Now, this is one of my uh, safety minute slides that no longer pertains because Phil's not going to do our safety minute this week. This is got Don Frank's going to come up. He's got something he wants to share with everybody. So let's welcome Don. I uh, volunteered to do this tonight because Murphy visited me a couple times since uh, we've had a meeting. Um, the first occurrence wasn't anything that happened to me, but a, a good friend of mine in Texas, I get a phone call from him. His brother is a wood turner. And he was in the hospital. He got a bowl hit him and uh, ended up in the hospital for two or three days. It caught him in the abdomen and broke a couple of ribs. And he got he suffered internal bleeding as a result of it. So he's kind of awake. I, did, I don't know him personally, but his brother and I are, are friends for 40 years, you know. So it has a little different feel when it happens to, to somebody that you can relate to. In my own shop, I had two different things that have happened in the last month. Um, the first one was during that real cold spell. I was bored for something to do, and I went back and I grabbed a log off of a uh, that was sitting on top of um, some mesquite, and I wasn't real sure what it was. I thought it was maybe a piece of box elder because the bark looked real similar. And uh, so I put it on, and this is the a throwaway piece of it but um i uh started turning a vase off of it or i started turning and Im immediately within two or three minutes i could just tell that it was real dusty and dry and i went over and put a dust mask on and wore the du a good quality dust mask from then on i continued to shape it into a vase that was about 16 or 17 inches long and by the time I got to the point of sanding, I, I felt like I had two tablespoons of black pepper in the back of my sinuses. They were just absolutely on fire and it was working its way down into my throat. And, um, and I realized that what little dust that I had gotten off of it early on was enough to create that. And so it made me wonder what the wood was. And um, I got to thinking about it and talked to Mike about it. And um, the fellow down in Texas where that we got the mesquite from, he'd thrown in a couple of pieces of Chinese tallow, which is a common or fairly common 
ornamental wood down there, uh, I don't recommend it. So that one, that one, uh, I never took it any farther and I threw it through the, the turning in the dumpster because I, I didn't want to take a chance of, of sanding it and hollowing it and finishing it. Then um, about a, it may have been the next thing that I turned a week or so later, I put a, I had a oak bowl that was once turned and decided to twice turn it. And it had a little hairline crack on the back side that didn't come through on the to the front side. And I thought that it wouldn't be a problem to turn it out. And I was wrong. So <laughs> I was out of the line of fire. I, I'm pretty careful about uh, trying to stay out of the line of fire, but the thing went rocketing over and, and hit something on the other side of the shop with enough force that I knew that I didn't want to get hit that way. So anyway, two occurrences in that short a period of time. And I'm, you know, I haven't been doing it nearly as long as some of you, but I'm not a complete newbie. And I usually that light goes off in my head when I get the feeling that something's not quite right. And, um, and it didn't on this one at all. And then the Chinese tallow snuck up on me too. So anyway, it can happen. And uh, you just have to watch out for it. Um, thank you, Don. That that gives me a thought that um, we all hit those situations, that scary situation that you survived and go, wow, that could have been dangerous um, or something that did some harm. And to come here and share it is possibly going to keep somebody else from getting into that same situation. So anytime any of you have have a experience especially one that that has has scared you to the point of i need to let other people know feel free to grab phil's safety minute phil jumps in here every month he, he goes out and he finds a good subject but he won't mind at all and i think pertinent information to share with the club is is a valuable thing that's that's what part of the club is about so thank you um no further ado, I'm going to let Mike come over and introduce himself and tell you what he's going to demonstrate tonight, and we'll get us started. Testing. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Great. Okay. Welcome. Uh, my name is Mike Thomas. For those of you I haven't had a pleasure to meet yet, then I am um, pinch hitting for Anthony tonight. He uh, called this morning about 1130 and went on the DL. So I'm, I figure, oh, what am I going to do for a demo tonight? And I thought, well, kind of what I guess I've been working on. Anyway, uh, let's see. Has uh, I get started here and well normally has that ever happened to anybody okay okay on my lay that happens all the time and this is the worst offender of all round 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 handles so I don't like that um, so I put myself on a mission to, uh, try to find a solution to prevent these tool handles from rolling off my lathe bed and, uh, you know, avoid, normally this always happens after you're getting ready to do that last cut, you know, and you just, you sharpen up and then you go and set it down and it, it rolls off and then you got to go sharp because it always lands this way. Got to go sharpen again. So and, Day. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is to design a comfortable handle with a grip and length to fit under my arm, like this for improved stability and control. And uh, I prefer wood or plastic over metal, simply because even though my shop is heated and air conditioned, 
in the winter, these handles still get really cold and they're kind of hard to hang on to. So, um, or they're uncomfortable to hang on to. And the big thing is, okay, I've got some experience. Uh, you say I worked for Pfizer for 30 years and um, KU Medical Center was one of my accounts and working with the Department of Allergy, Clinical Immunology and Rheumatology. And we sponsored a program called the Patient Partner Program. These are for arthritis patients and worked with occupational and physical therapists and physiologists to come up with some adaptive assistive devices for arthritis patients that made it easier for them to, uh, to go about normal daily activities. And uh, I learned a lot about leverage and uh, the, the weakness and strength. For example, a lot of arthritis patients, well, there's two different forms of arthritis, not to get into this too deep, but osteoarthritis is the most common form. And that is one of basically wear and tear on the joints. But rheumatoid, psoriatic, you know, and, and there's 21 different types of uh, non-osteoarthritis that uh, these patients have real difficulty in the morning getting up. I mean, sometimes it takes them an hour or more just to get out of bed. You know, so with osteoarthritis, you know, the more you use the joints, the more it hurts and everything. Later in the day is when it really symptoms appear. But uh, for rheumatoid and so forth, they, those forms of arthritis makes it just tough to get out of bed in the morning. So what we do is try to avoid um, wear and tear on the joints and learn an awful lot about vibration and uh, this effects on carpal tunnel and this kind of thing. So vibration is something that a lot of wood turners experience. And there are some older wood turners that stop turning simply because they lose feeling in their hands and can't you know, lose their grip and can't turn anymore. And so avoiding a... a Really avoiding the uh, vibration is one of the things that helps. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, anyway, uh, what I did was um, I did a mass market search trying to find the best handles I could that would uh, fulfill the criteria that I had. And uh, Sorby, Taylor, and Crown all have these round wooden handles, and none of them have a flat spot or anything on them to prevent, prevent rolling. So... That was, you know, even though it's good steel and, you know, good tools are widely sold, widely available. Many of you, I'm sure, have got some of those. Um, they roll. And so what I found was um, I wanted to find something. These are nice and they've got some palm swell, which is easy to hang on to and so forth. That, uh, but their handles aren't interchangeable. So once you wear this down and everything, it's kind of hard to get this out because these are epoxied in and you're throwing it away. So uh, the, uh, let's see, some, okay, Carter and Sons, you know, that's a pretty popular tool. Uh, worst handles in the world. I mean, they're aluminum, they're cold, they're round, they roll like crazy. Even though they're interchangeable, you know, I don't have one. I, I don't want one. So but I'm just saying that I took a look at that. Um, simple wood turning tools offer interchangeable aluminum handles with a soft foam grip. But if you've ever felt those, they're real, real squishy. And I thought you can't get real good control that way. So anyway, I put, uh, that was off my list. Um, Thompson, you know, Thompson makes, I'm sure many of you probably got some of the Thompson handles. It's nice in that uh, these don't roll nearly as bad as, you know, anyway, but it's aluminum, it's an black anodized aluminum. The nice thing about this is they are interchangeable, two set screws here, and you can fill the end with shot. So that is something that really helps to avoid vibration. And you can put as much or as little in as you want, so you can completely remove it. And that, say, adds weight and uh, avoid helps to minimize the vibration. Um, one way in Hasselot, these are black pipe. I don't know if... And these weigh a ton. In fact, I think I wrote on this one. It's like three and a half pounds. But uh, this is a one way. This is a Michael Hasselock. And they're both, you know, modular handles. And that there's a, you can put a half inch tool in one end and a three eighths in the other end. And uh, with the uh, uh, set screws in there, holds them in. So they're interchangeable. But they're round and they roll. So that was off the list. Uh, there's a number of collet tool handles that are available. I mean, Robust makes one. Um, gosh, 
uh, Jimmy Jimmy Clues has a really nice one, and Johannes Mickelson, you know, Hannes Tools, he makes one, and they offer collet handles. Uh, they're kind of expensive. I tell you, I think probably the neck one of the two best tool handles on the market is from Johannes Mickelson. They're a trilobe. They fit in your hand real, real nicely. Even though it's aluminum, it's got this black or the green plastic on there that fits your hand really nicely. So that you know, the advantage there is, and again, you can put shot in the end of it. Uh, it is, uh, you can adjust the weight and uh, less grip is needed. So the less pressure you have to put on the handle to make the, to use the tool, the longer you can turn and the less vibration you're going to experience. But uh, Trent, uh, let's see, Jimmy Clue is robust. Uh, others offer these, uh, ro uh, the collet handles. Uh, Vicmark, this is the absolute best tool handle, in my opinion, in the world. This has got two little flats right here. You can try to really make it roll. It doesn't roll. You can remove this cap on the end and uh, fill it with shot as much as you want. This is a, uh, I don't know what kind of plastic this is, but it is real comfortable. And uh, the only problem with this is they're no longer available. I checked this afternoon again, and uh, even from Vicmark in Australia, it's not available. I got this one from... Um, Christian Berard at uh, Woodworkers Emporium in Las Vegas. And uh, I, this is one of the last ones he had. I would have bought, you know, five or six of them if I could, but uh, this is the only one they had. You know, two Suskers, one on top of one on the bottom here. It's just, just real comfortable. And it, you know, it fits my hand well and it, it works real well for what I, I really enjoy that handle. Uh, there's others. The, uh, this is the Stuart Batty. Uh, version. and Ashley Harwood, her tools are remarkably identical. Okay. This is nice. And, and my, this comes in about eight different lengths. You can remove the cap on the end to fill it with shot and put as much in there as you want. And this, three, how's that? and it three turns and it's, you're set. This is, they're great tools. Even though this is, you know, not got palm swell to it, it doesn't roll. So, but this is my bottom bowl gouge, bottom feeder. I love this thing. And you can get down and in and around and uh, it works real well. Now, a little history for those of you relatively new to turning. Uh, this is an heirloom. This is, is you know, a tool that I have that uh, I don't use. This is for show only. I bought this about six or seven years ago. I got it at a tool auction that the club had, uh, paid like $250 for this. Thank you, Kevin. He donated it. Uh, this is a Jerry Glazer scraper. This guy started making tools in uh, 19, the early 1960s and worked with a guy named, um, uh, oh, the, uh, I just went blank thinking of um, who Jerry Glazer and uh, Bill had a, there's a book about this guy. Anyway, way, way ahead of his time. Uh, this has got some little lobes here where it won't roll. <laughs> Take this plug out, fill it with shot. And uh, it is modular. If you ever grind this down, it uh, you can replace the blade in it, but this is really something. So Anthony Howden has several uh, glazer tools and they're color coded. The color means it means something. But it's what the, the black ones are 10% vanadium, 15. What are the gold ones? Okay. This, this guy was a metallurgist an engineer and uh, avid, real avid wood turner. And uh, it's amazing his contribution. And everything. But, uh, what happened was, um, in 1980 something, he sold the company to another guy who came out with, uh, it's called Glazer High Tech. Not the same. 
those tools are not available anymore. And I mean, they cheapened them a little bit. They tried to improve them by putting a, a gel coating on the handles and everything. Anyway, it uh, hasn't really gone over. What this company decided to do then was to enter the, uh, they make tools for uh, a jet propulsion laboratory and what is now NASA, but those tools aren't available. So long story short, I thought I need to make my own tools. And one of the things I've been working on lately is, well, first of all, there's a lot of tools with inserts. And one of these is not epoxy, Dan. But these inserts, you can get, I get them from uh, Cindy Drozda. Is that me? Come in different sizes, and they're like 20 bucks. But uh, so this is what, you know, you turn, turn a handle and then drill this out with, well, this one is a three quarter inch epoxy that in and you're good to go. So anyway, uh, these are a nice alternative and you can shape the wood, of course, to handle whatever you like. And uh, so I've, I've done that. They work real well. Uh, here's also a different kind of, this is a one-way tool insert. And I need to put the little screw in here because when it's real dry out, this is actually threaded and it can come apart. Anyway, really nice in that uh, this sturdy, this is a little detail gouge I have that uh, I love this handle. So that, and uh, what I've been working on lately is um, I, I use a lot of negative rake scrapers and finding uh, a handle for it for a rectangular tang like this for a skew or a, a scraper um, is not easy to find. I mean, you can make some little wedges to put in the round opening on these others, but I decided let's say, to make my own. And the way I did that is pretty simple. Slides right in there. Got to back that screw out a little bit and show you. But I drilled and tapped this. It's like a quarter 20. You tighten those up, and it's great. I started off with uh, just a blank like this. What I did was I ripped it in half over on the rip saw. And uh, then I went over to the router, and I uh, just routed this out. This is uh, 9 16 by 5 16 I divided that by two so that I cut just halfway in here. So it's like right in the center of the end here. And uh, it's real easy just to put on the lay then and turn it to whatever shape you want. But uh, this has worked out real, real well. And uh, so that's kind of what I've been doing there. So if any of you really want to make your own tool, your know, handles, it's not that tough to do. And uh, I'll leave that in there. So what I did is the first step of this was to, uh, you know, rip this, route it, glue it back together, put this on the lathe. This is the first thing I turn is where this ferrule goes. And I turn that on, pound it on so it's nice and tight, and then shape the handle, part it off. And then I take it over to the uh, drill press and I will center punch a hole or two little holes here and then drill for the, uh, uh, drill and tap for the quarter 20 thread and works real well. So that's kind of how I solve the ergonomic problem of tool handles. And uh, I like the feel of wood and, uh, you know, you can do whatever shape you want. This is nice. My point again is it doesn't take much of a flat to really prevent them from rolling. I mean, there you go. It's Sure beats having to, you know, chase the thing across the floor and then go back to the grinder and sharpen it up only for it to happen again. And that's happened to me twice anyway. So uh, I this is my solution to that problem. Now, here's part two of my demo and it is the KCKPD. Here's a story. I got a call in early December from a 
Kansas City, Kansas police officer who lost his baton and went to his sergeant to find out if he could, if he would pay for it out of pocket, you know, could get another one. And the sergeant told him, oh, there's a little problem because the person who was making these was a guy at uh, Kansas City, Kansas Community College in their wood shop. And he died unexpectedly like two and a half years ago. And they've not been able to find anybody since then that can make a baton. This is the original baton that they had that uh, and they actually have you know, wood available. Anyway, uh, I turned one for this officer out. It was what, one Wednesday night, Anthony was there. And I had a piece of walnut, a stick of walnut, because that's all I had. And so I turned it for him and he took it to work the next day and he called me by like 1030 in the morning and there were a number of other officers that were looking at it and everybody, where'd you get that, you know, and all this. So anyway, um, there is a detective down there who is the kind of the head of the batons. And here's the, the real story that the department, it, it's kind of a, uh, been a tradition for them over 60 years that uh, for every cadet that graduates from the academy, at their graduation ceremony, they give them three things. They give them their badge, they give them uh, their certificate, and they give them a baton with this and lasered in KCKPD with their badge number on it. Okay, this is something they're proud of. Uh, Detective Dolshaw is a second generation cop and he has his dad's original baton and everything. So anyway, he's the one that kind of took this project under his wing and has been looking for someone to do this and he called John into a detective Smith, uh, Officer Smith into his uh, office and said, where did you get that? And he said, well, I said, you know, um, I guess he would turn this guy. He goes, I need his number. And he said, well, you know, he goes, no, I want his phone number. <laughs> I need his phone number now. <laughs> and so he gave him, a, anyway, he called me and said, uh, can you make these for us? So, Recognizing our uh, financial situation and an opportunity to, this could be kind of like our turf box project, you know, according, you know, for the, the Gill has a turf box project. Uh, this could be an income stream for us. So anyway, this is what I'm working on. And uh, this is what they had. This to me looks like this came off of a lathe duplicator, you know, with a just jamming a, a carbide tip tool in because I see torn out end grain here on the sides of these beads and everything. I mean, this is a 25 inches long, inch and a half in diameter with four two inch beads. This is stupid, simple spindle turning. Okay. So anyway, uh, I thought it'd be nice to give them, uh, you know, some enhancements. Um, you know, this is one for this other officer that came down with, Detective Smith, or uh, Officer Smith, and uh, this guy was a uh, minor league baseball player. This guy looks like Travis uh, Kelsey without the beard. Okay, he got his hands. I don't think he ever wore a glove when he was playing baseball. He didn't need to. He's got these huge mitts. So this is a little little larger in diameter, and I put a little palm swell in there, and they love this. This is just a one eighth inch parting tool right here. I just, eh, 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 you know, to cut these grooves in here. And uh, anyway, it was something, you know, quick and easy to do. What was interesting though, was when um, uh, Officer Smith told me that, you know, first of all, the color of the wood, the walnut, when I turned for him was too dark and the wood weight was too light. And he said, I said, well, that's walnut. I mean, a lot of people like walnut. He said, that's old school. No, we don't do that anymore. You know, we like the lighter color, like maple or something. So I said, okay. Um, so, you know, gosh, you can, you know, bust a lot of heads with a, you know, walnut baton. And he said, 99% of the time, what we're using these for is to break glass. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah. Window glass, auto glass. He said, you know, we're frequently breaking glass with them. And I thought about that. And have you seen those Leatherman tools? You know, it's like a, a Swiss army knife on steroids. And a lot of them have like a little carbide tip on there that you used to break glass with. 
And I uh, thought, what could I use to, or get to, you know, to do this? Well, it took a while. I mean, I Googled everything. I thought, okay, when I was in high school, I worked at a general tire store and this was in the winter and I was having to uh, insert you know, or plug tire, you know, snow tires with these uh, studs, for snow tires. And uh, I thought, well, those won't work, but I'll see if I can find something. Looked and looked and looked and looked. Okay, I found two different options. This is one and I'll pass it around, but this is, I'll show you what this is. This is like a lag screw. Where'd they go? Here's a larger size of the same thing. That's what, you know, it's a carbide tip insert in there. And it's, it's a lag screw that uh, there's a pointed one option available. And then this one with a, a flat, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's kind of a flat on the top. I'm thinking this is gonna go, and I turned this profile like this, and this is where it would go. They wear these in a one and three quarter inch ring on their belt, okay? It's a, a chrome ring on a leather tab that is snapped to their duty belt. And so I thought, well, something like this probably worked pretty well because you know that's small enough, and again, enough force on a small diameter to break glass. And uh, where I found this, what these are used for, fly fishermen. They screw these into the boots of their chest waders so they don't slip on the slimy rocks and everything when they're out fly fishing. Who would ever thought of that? You know, really, come on. Now, there's this one and there's, you know, a bunch of different examples of this. And uh, anyone guess what these are used for? What this is, you can see, short stud, this is like 5 sixteenths. Uh, 12 thread per inch. Anybody got any ideas? What's that? What kind of shoe? Horseshoe. Horseshoe. Can you believe that? Yeah. They have these, they drill and tap horseshoes and they put these studs in there so the horses can walk on, you know, ice and not, not slip and fall. So, Anyway, I got some uh, different options and everything. I'm going to uh, present to Detective Dolshaw, and he takes this in, to the uh, chief of police and uh, has already approved the budget for it and everything. Just a matter of maybe some of these uh, enhancements they may, you know, appreciate. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. It's a little premature at this point because I haven't got a deal all set up and everything. But uh, you know, it looks like they want us to make these make them for them. In fact, what they said is that you know they had enough lumber for 300 sticks, batons. And again, this was two and a half years ago at KCK Community College. Well, in that time, that lumber disappeared. And so, yeah, the uh, police department wasn't real happy about that. So the college replaced, yeah, bought the wood to replace it. And uh, now they're looking for some place to put it. And they wanted to bring it here. And this is in, 10, 12 foot lengths and everything, you know, uh, said, we're not in a, in a position with moving our shop to be able to put it any place now. Or, and so we need, it, need some time because I want to get it out of that warehouse and everything so that it doesn't disappear again or anything. So anyway, they are in a toot to get it over to us. They're going to rent a trailer and everything to bring this. It is way too long to put in a pickup truck or anything. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at, but uh, wish us luck. And hopefully this will become a nice little income stream for us that uh, will help us through our precarious financial situation. Okay. Has anybody got any questions or any ideas or anything that they'd like to share? This hard rock maple. Yeah. And I, I thought about hickory. I thought if nothing else, even Osage orange, if they're wanting some really heavy, I mean, but I don't think. Yeah, you know, of course that darkens quite a bit. But uh, anyway, we're going to see if we can make this work. Yes. Uh, the blade work, is that on a round 
Kevin, Kevin does this. Pass these around for you to look at. You kind of compare them. So, yeah, I've, Kevin did a tremendous job on that. And, uh, you know, I've shown that pictures of that to uh, uh, Dolshaw and uh, Smith and uh, uh, Officer Lovett. They are, are imp really impressed. So that's kind of where we're at. This is, oh, that was kind of funny because when uh, Officer Smith, you know, took this this walnut one that I turned for him back to the department, Dolshaw told him, he said, you can't carry that. And he goes, why not? He goes, it hasn't got KCKPD and your badge number on it. Anyway, Officer Smith said, I'm going to carry it anyway. He goes, they got, they got bigger fish to fry in the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department. So anyway, um, yeah. And also thinking, you know, if for a person, if you were to carry the, one of those, or say a baseball bat in your truck, okay? What I found, and actually I learned this from Kevin, that, you know, if you do that, if you have a baseball bat in your truck, you damn well better have a ball and a glove as well. It's Otherwise, a, a ball and a glove. Yeah. So FYI. Anyway, any other questions? Not showing up anyways? Yeah, I have. Huh, now I haven't seen her new ones, but uh, like I say, I buy these inserts from Cindy. Also? And, uh, yeah. By the way, these inserts are available from, uh, gosh, Oh, well, yeah. Um, uh, Thompson, uh, I mean, a lot of them carry them now, and they're all from the same source. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Did you experiment in some on flattening the palm swell on handles? That seemed to work. Is this okay? Yeah. You know, it feels a whole lot better in your hand, and you've got better control and a better grip with a little palm swell in there. And again, I found this through uh, some research I did. You know. Oh, I, I really like the palm swell too, you know, and that's. You just like on this one, and of course, don't ever use the end of a can of spray lacquer. I sprayed this on here and there were some bubbles and I'm gonna have to sand this off and redo it. But I just put a little flat here and just, you can see what I did here. Pass this around. I'll remove this so you don't have to, I get my scraper back. I made this kind of tight on purpose. But take a look at this. Yeah. Mike, have you ever thought of putting a flat on like the crown though? Oh, that's what these, that's what this, this is. This is what I've done to, oh, this is one that just hasn't been to visit the belt sander yet. But it is going to real soon. It really does. I mean, like I said, you can come up here and try to roll some of these, and you can see I, there's not much of a flat here. There's no flat on this or these, and they roll all over the place. But you can see on this Vicmark handle, there's just a very little bit, and you put it in your hand, and it really feels good. It helps you to orient where, like, the flute is. Um, this is a uh, bowl gouge, but works real well. I mean, I've just been really impressed. So, yeah, have fun making your own tool handles. You can save some money, and you can make them fit exactly the you know way you want to, and what is comfortable to you. And they're not very expensive. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, like I say, 
the way I did this, like I said, not wanting a round hole was, uh, like I said, rip this in half and then take it over to the router. In fact, right there. Get the bit and get the width. Half, half of the width and half of the length so that it's centered right in the blank. And then put it on the lathe and turn it. You know, it, it was pretty simple and it's worked real well. Yeah. You know what? That is tried and true. I sanded it and then I just rubbed it with some tried and true. I like the feel of it. It's, it's uh, polymerized linseed oil and beeswax. And, you know, I bought a pint of that, oh, a couple of years ago, and I never really used it. And I thought, well, I'll put some of that on here and see. And it's all solids. It's food safe completely. And it uh, a little bit goes a long way. It's amazing how far that stuff goes. So I was like, this is kind of expensive. It's $25, $30 for a pint. I think it's down about that far. And I put it on a dozen projects, you know. And it's real, and real easy to apply, you know. It's, it's real thick. It's thicker than honey. But you just take a rag, wipe it on, leave it alone for an hour, and then you go back and wipe it off. Real simple. Any other questions? One thing I wanted to point out that we didn't uh, talk about at the board meeting, and we need to. Mike McReynolds reminded me about the tool show that's coming up in March. And uh, we want to be able to participate in that. So we're going to get. Uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody about that. Well, Mike, <laughs> OK. And you said they're looking for some help with uh, turning pins for the uh, tower to right. uh, tunnel. tunnel to tunnel. towers to tunnel. Yeah. That'd be, I don't think, you know. Just, just a single barrel of pan. Okay, great. A big item. All, all we do is just uh, supervise. Oh, wow. People turn it themselves. Have, great. If it's 